two parts. Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, on this episode, we're going to continue making the Kukri knife sheath. And on the last episode, if you saw that, we made our patterns. I've got some scrap pieces of leather here for the front and for the back. So we'll go ahead and trace those out, cut them, see how far along we get today. So come on in, and let's get started. As I said, today we've got our patterns ready for our kukri knife sheath. And if you go back and take a look at the last episode, we uh, got this knife from a customer and made out our patterns for the front and for the back. If you didn't get a chance to see that one yet, make sure you go back and take a look at it. This is going to be a very unique custom sheath because with the bend and the knife, we want this to go in and out straight until it starts to bend. Well, if you were trying to put that knife in with a bend in it, uh, you're going to end up cutting the stitching or the leather. So my thoughts and my idea was to take it all the way to where it actually bends where it comes up straight make that the main part of the sheath and then up here where it narrows this side where the blade is will be stitched the other side the back will fold over and snap and that's what's going to hold this knife in there good and tight it's not going to go anywhere Unsnap it and it should draw straight out. So it should be a really good, sturdy uh, sheath for that knife. So, first thing we're going to do is I'll take my front piece, and as I said, I just had some big enough pieces that were uh, scrap and I'm just going to trace those out and I am going to put a spacer in there and I think as thick as this knife is on the backbone I think I'm going to put a spacer on both sides. I was thinking about just doing it on the blade side, but now I'm thinking about doing it on both sides. And I can kind of lay the knife in there when we get the spacer uh, and get this cut out also. So let's set that aside, get our other piece with our back, uh, and I want this side, when it folds over, I want this to be the unfinished side of the leather, this to be the finished side, so that when that folds over, this is a finished side, and that's going to snap right into there. So I want to make sure I cut this out right, or... Uh, it'll be backwards. So I want my finished side of the leather correct. And on the spacer, when I cut that out, it should leave me enough leather because I only need like a quarter inch or so because I do want to glue and sew my spacer in but that should leave me a quarter inch to go back and make my spacer out of what's left. So it's not like I have to hunt for another piece of leather. And remember I will be the finished edge 
of this. So I won't bevel both sides of each piece. I'll only finish the bevel the finished edge on each piece. And with that spacer, what that'll do is it'll make it look like uh, more of a square edge rather than three round edges kind of folded into one another. Sometimes that, that doesn't look that great so we're going to do it a different way than I normally do. Let's get our blade out and I'm going to follow that line and again if it's a straight edge and you want to use a ruler straight edge, square, whatever, that's fine too. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I just freehand it and follow the line. So there's a scrap piece that's probably going to be big enough to make a few keychains or a leather bread or something. I'll hang on to that. I very rarely, if I if I can make anything, a little strap or anything out of scrap, I'll keep it. Because, uh, as you guys know, if you, if you're doing this, leather is very expensive. So I like to uh, keep as much. of my scrap pieces as I can. If I can make something else out of it, I will. Another scrap piece that I'll probably make something out of. And then I'm going to go around this corner here. And again, I'm freehanding it on that line, and I'm not trying to cut through the entire thickness of the leather. I'm just trying my best to stay on that line. And I can come back and follow that groove that I cut on the first pass. Like now, I'll come back and I'll start following that groove. Well, I can put a lot more pressure on there because I have a guide now to follow my blade in. I got a little groove there that I cut in the first time for my first pass. And I'll back cut that a little bit right there where that little notch is. Now this little piece here I'm not going to be able to do anything with anyway. Um, So I'll go ahead and cut that off and that will be a piece that will go in the trash because it's not big enough to do anything with. Now I'll start again here and my first pass so again all I'm doing is 
making some penetration into that leather, that top layer, but I'm staying exactly on that line. Again, I can move move my piece around. Then I'll come back and make my second pass. Depending on the thickness of the leather and the sharpness of your blade, obviously, is going to depend on how many passes or how hard you press. You can see on my second pass this is cutting right through no problem. So there's another scrap piece. It's not big enough to make anything out of. So that'll be a piece that'll go in the trash these two pieces here I'll keep I can make a strap out of this I'll put those in my recycle bin or my scrap bin so here's the front piece or the back piece that's the one that gets the snaps This is the part that'll fold over. Then we'll go to the front piece. That's this piece. And start cutting it out. There's another scrap piece that will go in the trash. And you can see I tried to use scrap pieces that uh, I didn't have a lot to throw away. And I'm trying to get the most out of every piece of leather that I have. So there's another scrap piece. Not big enough to do anything with. We'll go down this backbone. Again, my main focus is to stay right on that line. And then go back. My second pass. Now that one's big enough we could make something with. A little strap or a keychain. So put that in the recycle bin make sure my blades in there secure Takes a lot of concentration for me to make sure I stay right on that line. 
for one thing, even though I have my glasses on, I don't think my eyesight's near as good as it used to be. There's the front of the sheath cut out. And then, as you can see, where I cut this part out, if we lay that knife in there, you could see the quarter inch margin that I left around it for my stitching. Well, my grooving and my stitching, I'm also leaving that to put my spacer in there. Well, I could cut my spacer on this side out of this piece. I have enough left and it's going to follow the exact same curve because that's what I just cut out of there. So if I want that to be a quarter inch thick or wide, all I have to do is just take a ruler and I'll go about every half inch down that edge and make a mark at a quarter inch. Now when I get ready to put this together, I'll actually use some contact cement and I'll glue this between the two pieces before I drill it for stitching. And then I'll come back, you can see the marks on there, and it's just like connecting the dots. And you can use your straight edge if you want to connect those marks. I'm just doing it freehand. It's not super critical because I will have a little bit of leeway from the blade to the spacer. So I can always shove the spacer in to meet the outside of the sheath. And then once you have your line, I'll double check it, because this is only going to go up to, check the back here, spacer is only going to go up to this point on the top so we'll have to cut another piece there it'll, it'll actually end up being two pieces this side goes all the way up to here so on the blade side, the spacer will go all the way up to almost the handle. So I do need to draw that all the way up so I can cut that. And then I can turn that whichever direction. And I want to try to cut it as straight up and down as I can so I can have a square edge on that. 
so you want to try not to lean your blade at an angle you want to try to keep it as straight up and down as possible follow that line Again, when you get to these smaller edges like this, these smaller pieces, be very careful with your knife. Then I'll come back, follow that groove I just put in there. there's my spacer and as you can see if I lay it on my sheath on the front it follows that all the way around that same exact curve because that was where this piece was cut out of so that makes it much easier without tracing it again um, I'm going to put this piece on here and trim the back end off or the toe so that's the spacer for that side now it'll actually go under here and then let me get this scrap piece put in my scrap barrel we'll get the back piece now remember I want finished down we'll take the spacer and it'll glue right there right along that edge and then this piece will glue right on top of it so I've got right at an eighth of an inch of space there and you can see it sandwiched in there and that'll all be glued and stitched so that'd be nice and thick right there on the edge and I think what that's going to do is really allow that knife to go in and out of there without having to yank on it or cut into the stitching or the leather and with that spacer in there it shouldn't cut into the stitching at all so that'll protect that stitching so the only thing I have to do now is to cut a straight piece right up here to go on this side and guess what that one long piece of scrap that I said I was going to throw away it's perfect it's going to be perfect for that so let me straighten this up put it on my self-healing mat with a grid uh, that way I can get a straight edge So there's a piece that I thought there's no way I'd have any thing to use it for and I just happened to look over there I hadn't thrown it in the trash yet I looked over there it was perfect for this so just kind of goes to show you that there are some things that you can use that
keeps me from cutting another piece up. Now this first piece spacer goes around the corner to the tip so this one will meet it. So I'm going to have to cut it off. And then I can make my quarter inch marks. And on this one, since it's straight, I'll just make two or three, one on each end at least. And draw a straight line. And then cut that piece out. Again, just like the other piece, I want to try to keep it as square, keep the edge as square as possible. So you want to try to keep your blade straight up and down. There's that second piece of spacer. So if I set this first one in place, set my second one in place, then I can put the top piece on. And there's all my pieces that I'm going to need cut out. This on the back folds over and snaps. Hold the knife in. This on the back folds over and stitches. And that's going to be for the belt loop to hold the sheath onto the belt. I am not going to... Uh, bevel these pieces and I'm not going to bevel the unfinished side of the leather. That's the side that will actually be touching the knife. So I'll take my small beveler. Again I like to polish them with some jeweler's rouge on a scrap piece of leather before I get started. And that makes them nice and slick and sharp. So I'm only doing, and by the way, I just said so again. When I edit these videos, I catch myself saying so a lot. So there you go, said it again. <laughs> Bad habit. I try to break myself of that. Just follow that edge and polishing those bevelers makes all the difference in the world. It just makes it glide so smooth. Again, you don't have to press super hard, especially if you keep your beveler sharp and polished up. And that takes that, any of that mark from that pin, takes that off of there too. And then there's a little bit
where I didn't cut it real good and then when I pulled it apart it left a little rough edge there but now we've got a good smooth edge beveled all the way around the finish side let's take the other piece set these spacers over here let's drop that a couple more times keep trying to turn this so you can see it better. I know half the time I'm probably in the way. I think one of the keys to beveling is keep your tool sharp so you don't have to press so hard. The duller your tool is, the harder you have to press, the harder you have to press, the more you kind of tend to mash the edge of the leather, which makes it harder to cut. So here's a lot of you may wonder what these things are on my tools and I don't know if I've ever explained it or not but I make those out of little scrap pieces of leather and punch holes in them and I put a Chicago screw around the tool and then a hole to put on a pegboard so that I can keep my tools organized right in front of me on a pegboard and uh, I'll show you what that kind of looks like. And it just makes it easier to grab a hold of those tools. And if I have to have that off of there, if it's in the way, normally I don't have a problem with it being in the way, but if I have to have it out of my way, I could just unscrew that Chicago screw and take it off. Or I'll in the case of some of these uh, burnishing tools, I just fit them as a press fit so they'll just slide right off. And then I can slide it on and hang it back up when I'm done with it. So it makes keeping my tools organized real easy. So there are pieces for the Kukri knife sheath. There's the knife. On the back piece here's the spacer on this side here's the spacer that goes on this side and then there's the front then this piece will fold over and snap onto the front So it's going to be a very interesting uh, finished product. I believe what I'll do next before I glue it or stitch it is go ahead and dye it. So on the next episode, uh, we'll be dyeing these pieces. Well... There's our pieces cut out for our cookery knife sheath. Come back on the next episode 
and we'll be putting some dye on there. The uh, customer ordered uh, buckskin dye, which is a lighter color, so it's going to be really sharp. Um, so you won't want to miss that. So like I always say, thank you very much for watching the videos, and please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.